Hi, this is your host Sapit Bhartia and we are back with our 2023 predictions and today we have with us once again Satya Sangran, GM of Cloud Casa by Catalogic. Satya, it's great to have you back on the show. Thanks, Swapna. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, before I ask you to go grab your crystal ball, I would remind our viewers quickly a bit about the company. So tell us about Cloud Casa. Cloud Casa is a, a, a Kubernetes dedicated backup as a service. Um, We've always been a product company. We're challenging ourselves to deliver this as a service, uh, which again, uh, takes more out of the plate of a customer who's already dealing with a lot of complexities in Kubernetes. We're trying to make the backups and, and disaster recovery and cloud migrations and cloud portability easy for those customers. At the end of the day, uh, security is now everyone's job and, and cyber resilience is 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 what makes you, uh, you know, prepared and be that last line of defense for uh, uh, your your environments? And uh, we essentially deliver that as a service for Kubernetes users. Uh, you can protect your workloads. Uh, you can recover your workloads irrespective of whether it's a calamity or a or whether you're a cyber casualty. Uh, we allow you to bring that data set back pretty quickly uh, with us. Now, let's, uh, let's, you know, uh, look at your crystal ball and tell us what predictions you have for 2022. And let's see what predictions you have for 2023. Awesome. Um, look, my first predictions for 2023 um, is that there is not going to be a slowdown in digital transformation, markets notwithstanding. Um, I think we, we, we're all kind of wondering whether there is going to be a recession or not. Uh, are we going to enter that territory? Uh, some people think that we are already in that territory and some people we think we are going in and out of the territory. But irrespective of what the markets do, um, I think when it comes to digital transformation in 2023, I think it's full steam ahead. Um, because uh, whether you're growing or whether there is a recession and there is a lot of cost pressures. Uh, I think Kubernetes and, and cloud native is all about, uh, you know, one, converting your cost to an OPEX model. And Kubernetes is all about re-platforming so that you get the most of that model, right? I think both those models are going to be very, very resilient. They will continue and they'll be full steam ahead. Uh, in, in fact, just like, COVID and pandemic did by accelerating a lot of our digital transformation projects, uh, I think you're going to see that uh, you don't let any good crisis go to waste. Uh, if 2023 becomes a, a, a crisis year for markets, I think technology will evolve uh, to completely uh, uh, utilize that crisis and, and advance itself uh, uh, going forward. So I, I think my first prediction is that there's not going to be any slowdown uh, in digital transformation, irrespective of what happens to the markets this year. My second prediction for 2023 is that I think backups are going to be the new borders uh, for organization. Um, look, we, we're in the middle of a war, or some may call it military operation, um, and, and, and uh, there is a lot of uncertainty, but one thing is clear. Uh, we are in the middle of a cyber war uh, from an IT industry perspective. Anybody's could that's got a data of importance, you are under attack, irrespective of your nationality, uh, irrespective of your industry. Um, if you have something of importance, you know, cyber crimes are on the rise and you are a target uh, at this point. And oftentimes your last line of defense is backups. And I think the ransomware and malware folks are, are, are picking up on that. And they're essentially treating that as the borders. This is the last, line of defense that they needed to breach because the minute they breach backups, they leave you extra vulnerable. Uh, so you have no other option to go back to uh, if, uh, again, your backups are breached. So treat your backups like they are your borders and protect them. Uh, don't treat them as secondary data, treat them as, as, as your last line of defense that will keep you sleeping at night and protected at all times. So uh, that, I think, is my second prediction for 2023. Uh, people are going to come after your backup, so protect it. My third prediction um, is uh, mission learning is not learning for missions. Um, what I mean by that, um, 
is that there is going to be so much AI ML advancement over the next year. It's going to become ubiquitous. Uh, we're already seeing people utilizing, you know, GitHub co-pilots to write code. And now the latest sensation, people are asking a chatbot, a chat GPT online to ask it to solve important challenges. Uh, one thing is for sure, yes, it will allow you to get your job done quickly, use it as an aid, but do not treat it as a substitute for knowing your basics. Because AI can be very, very effective, but it can also be confidently wrong. Um, so when you start utilizing uh, uh, code generated by machine learning, can you start utilizing solutions suggested by AI uh, you, uh, and, and put it in production, it will require uh, a, a level of resiliency in your IT operations. Because guess what? If you do not understand what you're putting in in production, things are going to break and it is going to take a longer period of time for you to resolve those. So downtimes are going to be longer. Uh, it's going to take you longer to uh, uh, get back to operations because you do not understand what you just deployed. So just know that machine learning is, it, people, people, uh, we don't learn from that. The, the good thing is it produces code, but unless you understand whether it's good or bad, we're not yet in a state where you can take that and apply that in production. Uh, um, and you can be very confidently wrong uh, uh, several times. So um, I would say uh, AI and ML are here to stay. It is going to be ubiquitous, but understand what you, how you're leveraging that AI and make sure you have a resilient architecture and, 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 and infrastructure whenever you are utilizing that AI, because you have to be able to trace back and, and solve problems when, when something goes wrong. My uh, fourth prediction, um, and this is for the cloud native world and, and the Kubernetes community we, we, we operate in, um, Kubernetes will get more complex before it gets easier. Um, and, and what I mean by that, uh, just this last KubeCon, Swapnil was there, I was there, uh, we saw 290 sponsors uh, at an open source community event, right? Uh, that's a lot of vendors trying to fill gaps in this ecosystem. Um, it is a, a, a telling sign that there are plenty of gaps in this ecosystem. Uh, we're moving very, very fast. And there are gaps that, you know, uh, e uh, this ecosystem plays a lot of vendors coming in and addressing those gaps. But now you are spoiled for choice. You're going to have a, a lot of options in front of you, and oftentimes you're not even going to know which is the right option. Um, and, and so curation of these options is in itself is going to be, uh, uh, I think, a market uh, in this ecosystem. But just know that, um, yes, it will eventually get simple, but this influx of uh, 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 commercial solutions targeting these problems in the open source community is, is going to make things a bit more complex for, for you, even if it's in terms of purely selection of those right solutions and putting them in place. So, um, so I think Kubernetes is going to get a little more complex over the next year before it'll eventually become very, very simple and more accessible to more of the tech community. My fifth prediction is going to be around a very specific technology. Uh, it's called Qboard, and many of you have, may not have heard it. Uh, Qboard is a project, it's an open source project that essentially allows you to run uh, virtualization workloads inside Kubernetes. So effectively, a lot of people today run Kubernetes on VMs, um, but think of the vice versa scenario. You can actually run VMs inside Kubernetes, right? So this is not completely new, but it's, it's definitely up and coming, but with the, the acquisition of VMware by Broadcom and, and the, a lot of the uncertainty surrounding it. And there is now uh, new rumors on what's going to happen to Nutanix, um, right? So you have two big players, uh, the number one and number two in this market, both seeing some disruption. Um, and I think this can be a huge boon for uh, this open source ecosystem and open source project which allows you to create a lot of hyper-converged offerings where VM, VMware or, or virtualized machines 
as well as containers can be operated and orchestrated through a single platform. And I think the number one and the number two player in the market are both ripe for disruption uh, through an open source ecosystem. So we're watching that very closely. Uh, again, as a backup provider, we're looking at how we could pro protect those workloads if people do make that shift. Um, but I think 2023 will be the year of KubeWatt's uh, 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 evolution as a mainstream uh, orchestration and virtualization platform. Uh, excellent. Thanks for sharing these uh, predictions. Now, if I ask you, what is going to be the focus for Cloud Casa in 2023? For 2023, for Cloud Casa, it is going to be uh, going all in on the cloud native ecosystem and, and the Kubernetes ecosystem. Um, as we talked about in our predictions, uh, we expect cloud native uh, uh, or, or digital transformation to be a key if a, a key effort for uh, all organizations. Whether you're trying to get lean, whether you're trying to grow fast, whether you're trying to cut costs, you know, answers to a lot of these questions is going to be digital transformation. And the digital transformation means you're embracing cloud native technologies and you're replatforming to make the most of the cloud native technologies. So. That acceleration, um, again, irrespective of what the factors are going to be, uh, is going to be key for Cloud Cluster to embrace. And that's why, again, we are a, a backup as a service that is built on the cloud for the cloud, built with Kubernetes for Kubernetes. Right? We want to embrace that and we want to go full steam ahead uh, with Cloud Cluster. The second thing is obviously we talked about resilience. Uh, it's, it could be for cyber crimes today. It could be for ML generated or AI generated code in future, um, right? But one thing is for sure, things will break, right? Uh, and, 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 and whether it was disks and hardware in the past and cybercrime in now or, you know, or, or machine learning in future, one thing is for sure, th something will break. And when something that is breaking, you need to have a resilient architecture to recover from and, and continue your operations. And we're going to make that possible uh, with uh, Cloud Casa. And we're going to keep up with the, the speed at which the ecosystem is evolving. Lots of great um, uh, uh, things coming up in the world of Kubernetes. There is edge computing coming up quite a bit. Uh, there is KubeWatt, which we, we, we talked about. Um, a way to run both virtualized missions as well as containers in a single platform. Um, I think at the end of the day, as an insurance provider, my job is to follow the data. I think data is going to go here, and we're going to have solutions ready for our customers to use when they start adopting these modern cutting-edge, bleeding-edge solutions going forward. Now, if I also ask you, what are the challenges that you see will be there in uh, 2023? I mean, you already talked about you know, a lot of opportunities. We talked about a lot of you know uh, better roses stuff, but I do feel that you talked about Kubernetes will become more complex before it becomes easy. And you also talk about, you know, despite the whole fear of recession, there will be growth in the tech industry. So, so talk a bit about uh, the challenges that you also see may be there in 2023 for you know, companies like Cloud Casa to solve. One of the challenge, and, and, and uh, this is an open source e e community, right? I think that back in the day, you know, people bought... Uh, from companies like IBM. I think there used to be a saying that if you embraced, you know, if you bought a solution from IBM, you never lose your job, right? Um, and, and, and so there was certainly brand value that carried a lot into uh, people's choices, right? I think we're seeing almost the opposite end of that spectrum where companies are now saying, hey, I want complete open source technology. I want to know what I'm using and how it was created, uh, how is it maintained, and how do I even contribute to solving a problem if I run into a problem, right? So um, I think the open source community complete, comes with a completely different view uh, into these uh, things. But remember that it is a community solution and, and you always solve for the majority in the community. Um, and, and, and so I, I think one of the challenges is for any adopter of these things, if you don't fit a mold, you could be left behind. And this is when commercial solutions can certainly pick up that uh, uh, slack. So I think for us, the challenge is 
as a commercial vendor, um, right now the thought process is my default option is is open source. How do we embrace that open source technology and contribute to it and, and actually solve problems for the customer? And how do we solve problems around the edge cases that the community doesn't solve for a lot of the minority folks that, that are in there? How do we solve their problems? I think those are both uh, 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 challenges for us in, in 2023 where we're looking to embrace. How do we better embrace an open source solution like Velero? Um, and, and how do we solve real customer challenges while embracing that ecosystem going forward? Satya, once again, thank you so much for taking time out today and uh, share these predictions with me. And of course, you know, I'll have you back again uh, for 2024 prediction. I also have a scorecard to see how many of your predictions uh, turned out to be true. I didn't say that in the beginning so that there's no pressure on you. But uh, thanks for your time. And uh, I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thank you. Look forward to uh, look forward to seeing that Swaptel and happy 2023 to you as well as your large audience. Um, I think uh, 2023 is going to be great for all of us and, and look forward to uh, reviewing that at the end of the year with you again.